I used to intern at Cartoon Network probably back, well, it was back in like 2014. I interned at uh, Ben uh, Cartoon Network for Ben 10. And uh, it was fun. I had a good time there. I interned there, um, met a lot of really good people there, knew a lot, uh, got to uh, know a lot of really good legends. Um, I was on Ben 10 Omniverse and it was sort of, uh, I was asking them, hey, um, you guys really like me as an intern. I'm just wondering if you guys will, are, are you guys have room to hire me on? And they're like, well, due to the spacing and uh, and the fact that they're not being a uh, Ben 10 Omniverse isn't going to be renewed, uh, we won't be able to have room to hire you on as a PA. All right, usually when you go on as a uh, as an intern, you get hired on as a production assistant, and then after working in a production production assistant for about like a year or two. Or maybe even half a year, um, they ask you what you want to do, and then you move your way up to like an artist or something like that, right? That's usually it. Um, but the thing is, um, if you guys don't know, uh, Cartoon Network officially went under. I drove by the building probably two weeks ago. The Cartoon Network building is no longer there, which sort of sucks. It's in Burbank, and there is a basically there's a the little building, and then there's a big black building in the back, right? There's a big black building in the back that has a CN on it, which is Cartoon Network. And uh, it makes me sad, man. Um, I was able to meet a lot of really, really good people. And uh, I also uh, bumped into uh, Tim Curry there. Actually, really, really cool. He, he does a lot of voices. And I bumped into him. I believe it was like a couple of weeks or months after he had his uh, stroke. And he was, so he was in a wheelchair. So he wasn't looking that great. But like I was able to bump into him, talk to him for a little bit. And it was really, really cool. So um, I did come across this video talks about Cartoon Network, and I want to see what they're talking about. I want to see what they are talking about in this video. Wow, so this is where cartoons get made. Not anymore. Cartoon Network is essentially dead. <gasps> and other big animation studios are not far behind. What the hell? What happened to all the animation workers? <gasps> a lot of them are unemployed, in record numbers, in fact. And many have been unemployed for upwards of a year. But they carried the industry during the pandemic. That's right. When COVID first hit, animation was able to operate completely remotely, making it one of the only forms of entertainment that could continue production un- So... This is technically not wrong, right? But it wasn't just the entertainment industry that was Cartoon Network or is, it's basically, it, you know, it's one form of it, but video games. Video game industry carried it even harder. Um, if you guys don't know, I work in a games industry and we carried the shit out of that. Like a lot of gotcha games, a lot of video games, even Twitch streaming has skyrocketed. And um, games were making so much more money uh, under COVID. And Cartoon Networks, on the other hand, the thing is, a lot of their shows have been garbage as of late. Uh, they haven't released anything really, really good in quite some time. And uh, knowing that um, I have friends who are at who were at Cartoon Network, who are working on um, the regular show, who are working on uh, what's called Steven Universe, uh, Clarence, We Are Bear Bears, a bunch of other these shows. The, the, the fact that like the fact that everything is being outsourced. Uh, to Korea, which is what um, Cartoon Network ended up using a lot. They use Korea a lot. Uh, the thing is, you have no jobs here in the states anymore, which is extremely sad, right? Um, it's uh, it was really, it was really sad that there's no more animation here. Um, everything is pre-production and then post is basically done here. The actual animation work is being done overseas. So, um, but the thing is, at the same time, you also got the production assistants um they basically wiggled their fucking little dicks into the animation guild and joined ayatsi right and they're like oh we actually work with the animators we work i mean we work with the artists and we work with everyone so why w shouldn't we get uh animation rate why shouldn't we be a part of ayatsi why couldn't we be a part of the union right so that's the reason why is another reason why a lot of them it sort of imploded and plus there's a lot of woke people who work inside animation a lot when i say a lot i'm talking about 70 percent to 80 percent people in the animation industry are extremely woke which is really sad too right and the thing is you don't have anything really really cool i also interned at nickelodeon and i also worked at nickelodeon but i worked at nickelodeon games i know a lot of them same thing with disney same thing with dreamworks same thing with warner brothers a lot of these companies have gone woke and have gone broke a lot. And it's just, people don't really care anymore, right? So uh, the things that streaming, these whole streaming battles and stuff like that, it doesn't make anything better. So that's the reason why they were trying to like do a strike, renew the contracts, 
writer strike, director strike, SAG strike, all that kind of stuff, right? And um, and that's the reason why a lot of them don't like the uh, they don't like guilds. But the thing is, they like, they like the guilds because they have high pay, right? They have really, really good, really, really good. Uh, what's it called again? Uh, benefits, right? Under uh, under IATSE. But let's continue interrupted but studios decided to pay them back by canceling projects outsourcing jobs and laying off artists on mass but why would they do that they've been why doing else? this for years man Greed. big studios make their finances look better by reducing spending and cutting staff ceos and executives reaping the monetary benefits for themselves so they want to reap huh i'll show them reap yeah that, okay that that is true a lot of video game companies a lot of them they actually uh do they Right before their fiscal year ends or the calendar year ends, they lay off a bunch of people. So it looks like they saved a lot of money, right? A lot of video game companies do that, which is, which is really, really shitty. Animation, not so much, but corporate-wise, yes. But animation, they have this thing called hiatus, right? You work nine months on, uh, let's see, um, Powerpuff Girls or whatever, right? Um, uh, what's it called again? Um, Young Justice. Uh, you work on um, Teen Titans Go, right? Oh, wh whatever show you're working on. You work out, you work there for six to nine months and afterwards you go on hiatus and hiatus is rather uh, it's basically like all right if if this show gets renewed for a new season we'll bring you back next season right but the thing is that they do it's it's like you work for six to nine months oh i'm looking for a job again i'm looking for a work again so it actually looks really good on their portfolio and on their resume that they're job hopping right every six to nine months they're going from studio to studio to studio it means they're employable but the thing is yes they do hire a lot, of, uh, a lot of people, but they also fire a lot of people. Everything is being automated now. Everything is being outsourced now. It's sort of, you guys did this to yourself, right? Oh, it's too expensive here in the States. Why does it cost $56, $60 to hire a storyboard artist? Why does it cost so much? Yeah, why does it cost so much, right? Because you have to, you, you, you have to factor in benefits you had to factor in merit increases like every year like the animation industry they get an increase and a bump in their salary no matter what which is a lot and i when i say 60 dollars an hour it's like 55 to 60 dollars an hour last time i checked uh, on how much like a base general artist get paid which is a lot of money all right and that's the reason why they like doing these animations type jobs is because it's it's fun it's easy and they get paid a lot. And that's why when they bitch and moan is because they've been sipping on that $9 Starbucks, you know, $10 freaking uh, avocado toast, which is probably $20 now. But yeah. I don't think you'll be doing much with a plastic scythe, but you can help by spreading the word. Post about your favorite Cartoon Network shows you wish were still around using hashtag RIP Cartoon Network and stay tuned for more ways to help tag by following this account. Animation is under attack. Which side are you on? I am on the side that if your show sucks, it should it needs to be canceled. And if your show is good, continue it, right? Like I said, I have a lot of people in tag that I know. I have a lot of people. I have a lot of friends who are in IATSE. I have a lot of friends who are still in IATSE. And they tell me it's, it's a fucking shit show, man. A lot of the really, really good people, they don't say. A lot of like legends, the people who have who've been in the industry for a long time, they don't say anything. They're extremely based, not woke at all, but they don't say anything is because the fear of getting canceled, right? And they're like almost at that point in time where they're um they reach that point to where they they are um in the guild long enough where they can get um a pension. So that's the reason why a lot of them don't say anything because they're like, oh, I'm I'm like five years from retirement. I'm 10 years from retirement. If I don't say anything. I will get the full, uh, the full, um, you know, a fucking um, pension by the time I, I basically get out. So uh, yeah, it, it it sucks for a lot of these people, but it is what it is. You get what you fucking deserve. Um, make stupid shit, win stupid prizes, basically, right? And if your shit sucks, Thundercats roar. You know that piece of shit, Yabba Dabba didn't look great, right? And I, and and chat, I, if you guys didn't know, Yabba Dabba, I t I did animation test for it. Uh, I did an animation and an, an, an animation test like eight years ago for the show. Um, I didn't like the style of uh, the new Flintstones, but I still did a test for it anyways. I also did a test for um, uh, Rise of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. But yeah, uh, they're using the Kami fist for their logo. Yep, they are. It's because these the, the people that made this this cartoon here, 
They're all fucking woke. Every single last member of the people who are working on shows like this, a lot of them are extremely woke. A lot of them are, right? Everything woke goes to shit. And it does, unfortunately. And the thing is that, you know, I miss Cartoon Network, man. Like OG Cartoon Network, like when they used to play Tom and Jerry. Tom and Jerry is still one of my favorite uh, animated shows, even though it came out in the 50s. Um, I love the whole cartoon cartoon era with Ed, Ed and Eddie, Cow and Chicken. And then they brought in uh, Toonami. Like I know the guy, his name is Ed, who actually brought in Toonami, brought in anime into the West. And Jerry's a jerk. He is. Jerry's the one who causes problems out a lot, uh, most of the time, but yeah. But yeah, man. I miss Cartoon Network, man. Uh, Cow and Chicken. Uh, I Am Weasel. Dexter's Lab. Johnny Bravo. Oh, man. So many good shit. So many good stuff, man. I miss it. 